for John Fugel's <laughs> Ang. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Greenspan, good evening. Um, it's actually the uh, Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Comedy Tour with me and Stephanie Miller and Hal Sparks. I play the role of tour. Uh, that's this weekend. Uh, I, let's hear it for the whole cast, huh? What a, what a night, huh? Anybody who can make the job bill dying that funny is terrific to me. I actually called Obama's job bill the agoraphobic bill because it's never getting out of the house, but... Um, uh, but anyway, I was, I saw, I, I'm a comedian, so I'm rooting for the Republicans. I mean, that's really it for me. I'm going for a Kane Bachman ticket all the way. Uh, and the Tea Party, I, God bless him. I mean, Tea Party is actually an acronym for too embarrassed to admit policies aggravating recession are theirs. Yes! So now you know. Uh, it also stands for total economic amnesia permits additional Republican trickle-down, y'all. But... <laughs> Uh, I really enjoyed the debate this week. Did you guys watch the Republican debate on Bloomberg? It was, I, I call it uh, King Romney and the Knights of the Trickle-Down Table. Um, a lot of fun. That show, I don't know if you actually saw it, but it was so toxic, ladies in Beverly Hills are injecting it into their foreheads right now. Because um, I love Mitt Romney. I, I, I do, as a comedian, I, he's going to be the nominee, I think. And if I could be that stiff for 90 minutes, I'd work in gay porn. But... <laughs> This, this guy's flipped like a crack house mattress, let me tell you. I mean, he's, he's a blast. He's no Herman Cain. Now, I do want to say, I want to thank the cast for not making any tacky jokes about 999 being 666 upside down. Uh, a lot of comedians are making this joke about it being 666, and that deeply offends me as a Satanist, I think. Um, <laughs> My dark lord would never, ever be so lame as to ask the poor to pay 9% sales tax while cutting taxes for the wealthy or your pizza's free. Uh, I do like Herman Cain, though, because Herman Cain may be the first black man in history to get another black man re-elected president. And that's just, <laughs> that's auspicious. Oh, and let, okay, Michelle Bachman, uh, let just, just for a minute, I know she's out of the race, but please, if you care about comedy, donate to Michelle Bachman's pack, please. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for her so bad. I think America's ready for another president who thinks Rwanda was JJ's sister on Good Times. That's a good thing. It's, it's just, it's just, Michelle Bachman, well, first off, I mean, I love her, because, again, nothing against Botox, but... Michelle Bachman, you can't be the face of a movement when your face has no movement. I mean, I love her. How do you not like her? I mean, Michelle Bachman, first off, she's against gay marriage and in one. So there you go. Um, God bless Marcus Bachman, my God. I'm going to suck the gay out of you. I'm going to suck it out of you in my clinic. Let your gayness come unto me. Come unto me. Oh, my God. Her handlers pulled out faster than Marcus after breeding duty. But... Uh, <laughs> I do, I love her. She's just comic gold. She really was well, Michelle Bachman signed a pledge saying if she became president, she would uh, ban pornography and defend the First Amendment. <laughs> no punchline in that, that's what you said. It's just, it's funny. If Michelle Bachman wants people to stop looking at pornography, she should appear in it, okay? That's what we're doing. And I know some of you are saying, hey man, she's kind of hot, she's kind of hot, I'd watch porn. You would not watch porn with Michelle Bachman. You would for five minutes, then you'd feel dirty. It'd be just too nasty, you know? Because Michelle Bachman's hot like a blank email's hot. There is no subject in the header and no message in the body. That's how hot she is. <laughs> Um, so, so who else is left? You got uh, Santorum, he's all over it. You got, uh, you got uh, Ron Paul. I think Ron Paul's actually running for Old West Lawless Cattle Baron, I think. Um, I would gladly vote Ron Paul as mayor of Deadwood. I would. I would pass that vote. Uh, Rick, oh, Rick Perry. I, well, I love Rick Perry because Rick Perry, as you know, loves Jesus. Loves Jesus. And he loves the death penalty, too, which I respect as a Christian, because if Jesus was about one thing, it was about killing the sinner, okay? Um, the whole book of Luke is pretty much fried the motherfucker. If you actually read Jesus' words, he said, forgive us our trespasses as we lethally inject those we think might trespass against us. So, I think Rick's a lot better since he had the bolts removed from his neck. But, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Have I covered the entire field? I think, uh, did I forget anyone? Uh, uh, I, oh, Newt Gingrich, who's only running for higher public speaking fees. And uh, <laughs> John Huntsman, who's doing much better since he dropped the yellow tie. John Huntsman is actually running to be the next flavor of the week. And I, I, I don't mean to badmouth Republicans, because I like Republicans. I do. I don't like who they vote for, but I feel bad for Republicans. Do we have any Republicans here? I will make fun of you, I promise. Any Republicans? I will not make fun of you. I promise you cowardly bitches. <laughs> um, I, I like Republicans, but these Republican parties, not the Republican party we, we grew up with, brothers and sisters. Am I right? I don't care how old you are. This is not the same Republicans, okay? When we were growing up, and I'm not, I'm not a Democrat, okay? What I hate about the Democrats, I, I hate about the Republicans that they keep forcing me to vote for these fucking Democrats. But, and everyone's saying Occupy Wall Street's a Democratic movement. Just because it's leaderless, disorganized, and has no clear message doesn't mean it's Democratic. Right? There's body odor there. There is. I've been to Occupy Wall Street. There's no Koch Brother air conditioned buses bringing people down there. It's the real deal. But, uh, so the Republican Party we grew up with, there were basically three types of Republicans, right, growing up? First off, we had the conservative Christians, my favorites. The people who worship Christ as a god, because that's a lot easier than following his extremely liberal teachings. <laughs> I voted for Jesus, actually, in 2008. I did a write-in ballot, because I thought, wouldn't the Republicans love to vote for Jesus Christ? Wouldn't they love to vote for a guy who was a peaceful, radical, non-violent revolutionary, hung around with lepers, hookers, and criminals, never spoke English, wasn't an American citizen, was anti-capitalism, anti-wealth, anti-public prayer. Yes, he was, motherfucker, Matthew 6, 5, anti-public prayer. 100% against the death penalty, but never anti-gay, never mentioned abortion, never mentioned premarital sex, and once it was a long-haired, brown-skinned, it's in Revelations, brown-skinned, homeless, Middle Eastern Jew. <laughs> But that's only if you believe what's actually in the Bible. <laughs> Second kind of Republican we all grew up with, the trickle-down economics guys, the Reaganomics guys, the golden calf-worshipping assholes, the guys we can thank for this economy we're in now. Of course, you wouldn't know that watching Fox, because rich people pay Fox people to make middle-class people blame poor people. <laughs> and it works. Occupy Wall Street. Obama caused the recession. Oh, it's like blaming Obama for this economy is like blaming your hangover on the guy making breakfast, okay? <laughs> you great, man. If your captain hit the iceberg, you don't yell shit at the rescue boat. That's how it works. <laughs> and these are the people, these Reaganomics guys want to put Ronald Reagan on the $50 bill. Have you heard about this movement? They want to remove Ulysses Grant, hero of the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> and replace it with Ronald Reagan. I say better idea, put Reagan's face above Grant's and then wait a few years from the gradually trickle down. Uh, and then finally, the third group of Republicans we all grew up knowing and loving, guys who really like Tom Clancy books. But there's a new breed of Republican out there now, brothers and sisters. There's a whole new kind of Republican. You all know what I'm talking about, the new kind that's out there. And it's angrier, and it's louder, and it's dumber, and it's meaner. I call them the illiterati. Now, <laughs> and again, I'm not a Democrat, OK? I'm really not a Democrat. I like, do we like Obama still in the House? Do we, do we like the president? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I thought I voted for a black guy, too. Um, <laughs> but then what happens? Every time, I mean, listen, I, I understand the frustration about Obama. I get it. People are really frustrated. He caved on tax cuts for the rich, and he caved on Gitmo, and he caved on the public option. The guy's caved so many times, there are miners trapped inside of him. I get it. <laughs> you know, it's like, hello, room service. Yeah, we were an FDR. You all sent up a Clinton. I totally get it. But what happens? Every time you're about ready to give up on Obama, what does he do? He comes out, he gives another speech, and we're all like, damn, Urkel grew up all right, you know? <laughs> the smartest thing Obama ever did when he got the nomination, everybody said, oh my god, the first African-American president, someone's going to take a shot at him. But was Barack Obama worried? He was not, because he had a vice president in mind that would guarantee zero assassination attempts. <laughs> Out, he was like, you want to kill me? Fine, Mr. Motherfucker. Here's what you get once I'm gone. The crazy middle-aged white guy who's an actual liberal and has plugs. Go ahead, I'll make it easy. Barack Obama is the safest black man in America. Next to Jay Leno's band leader. 
Uh, but so so I, I like Obama, but the new breed of Republican comes in three categories as well, okay? First off, you have uh, 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 the birthers. And these people are still out there. The people so angry that Barack Obama has a time machine he used to place a birth announcement in the Hawaii newspaper in 1961. And this is all just racist bullshit. These people were never said this about a white politician. They've never demanded a Caucasian show a birth certificate in their life. It's never happened. And, and you know, and it's like they're still doing it. Donald Trump, these people, there's a poll in Iowa Republicans, 56% still don't believe Barack Obama was born in this country today. Proving the greatest threat to our freedom comes not from foreign terrorists, but domestic douchebags. And it's all, it, it, it's racism. Now, can we can say that much. That much is racism. And, and I get the racist, thank you. Uh, the family bun trap. I, I, get, I get the racism, I, I do. And because uh, everybody has a racist in their life they love. Everyone here loves a racist somewhere. Y'all you you have one of these. Y'all have that cousin who sends you the emails about how Obama's a Muslim with a bad Christian pastor. Y'all get those people. And I say to all my racist friends, hey, I saw Barack Obama dance on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Trust me, the guy's half white. <laughs> he did this, white people, okay? Arsenio doesn't do this anymore. Barack Obama, that's how he got the elected. He did this, and all the crackers said, whoa, half honky blood, what of us? So you got the birthers, they're horrible people. Then you got the deathers, the death panel people. The ones who hate Obamacare, you're gonna be death panels. And these are the guys walking around at town hall meetings carrying pictures of Obama with a Hitler mustache drawn on him. Somewhere in hell, Hitler is furious at these guys for putting his mustache on a black dude. But he'll tell them when he sees them. Um, <laughs> Obamacare, I don't want to bring back pre-existing conditions. That's what it is. Every time Mitt Romney, every time any of these jerk-offs say they're going to repeal Obamacare day one, just realize they're saying we're going to be bring back pre-existing conditions for health insurance day one, and these douchebags cheer. It's like, you want to call it Obamacare? You want to call the Affordable Care Act Obamacare? Go right ahead. But then you better call Social Security, FDR Care, Medicare, LBJ Care, and tax cuts for rich fucks who don't need it, W Care. Then you go ahead and call it Obamacare on your life. That's not funny, it's preachy, but thank you for indulging. <laughs> and finally, my favorite of all, we've got the teabaggers. Um, if you're Spanish, most teabaggers. And uh, I, I love me some teabaggers. I could watch them teabag all day. Now, you guys know what teabagging is slang for, right? Everyone? Yes. Okay, because my father didn't. Um, <laughs> And my dad died last year. My dad was a Franciscan brother he, uh, he, before he married. My mother's an ex-nun. My father's an ex-Franciscan. I couldn't afford the therapy, so I do this. And my father wore the brown robes and the rope belt and walked amongst the people like the lost Jedi of Flatbush. And uh, he was my hero politically, and he taught me that Jesus was the most hardcore liberal that ever lived. But he didn't know what teabagging meant. And, and if anyone doesn't know, you know what teabagging is like for, right? Of course you do. Well, for anyone who doesn't know, teabagging, teabagging refers to a disgusting vile, unholy sexual act engaged in by gay men with gay men, or by straight men with amazing, spectacular women. And... <laughs> I'm just telling you ladies. It could save a marriage, but... Um, so my dad didn't know. So when my dad was in hospice last year, he did what lots of liberals do all the time, watched Fox News and screamed at the set. Uh, so I would call him every day, and I'd be like, hey, Pop, how you doing? Oh, I'm watching these teabaggers. They are protesting on the mall. Oh, oh yeah, are they angry? Angry? Teabaggers get testy. <laughs> well, what are they mad about, Pop? Ah, from what I understand, they're very upset about Obama's stimulus package. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, apparently, these people want to teabag Obama because his package was way too big. <laughs> Sure about that? <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot of folder all. This is all this is all your Glenn Becks and your Rush Limbaugh's getting these people riled up to vote against their self-interest. What do you mean? I'm saying when these people go teabagging, it's a couple of big mouths controlling all the nuts. <laughs> Dad, that's a little hard to swallow. <laughs> um, my name is uh oh, that, thank you for that tepid applause. Um, <laughs> My name is John Fugelsang, that is my real name. I didn't make that up to sound more ethnic and get more work. Um, Fugelsang's an ancient Navajo Indian term. It means lactose intolerant. Uh, technically, my ethnic background is Irish, Danish, German, which means I get drunk, hide the Jews, and look for them. <laughs> And uh, before
before I before I leave you, uh, I, I do lots of TV. I'm, I'm a regular on, uh, on on Chris Hayes' new show Up on MSNBC, and I'm also doing uh, CNN Showbiz tonight this week. That's something for both hemispheres of your brain. Um, and uh, uh, but I have a lot of exciting projects. Before I leave, I want to tell you some of my new TV projects I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've got a new game show that I am producing. I swore I'd never do one, but it's a great one. I'm hosting it and producing it. It's a game show about LA men called Gay or Armenian. <laughs> I have a, uh, I've got my first uh, children's book is coming out. It's a, uh, it's, it's, it's the first uh, all hardcore gangster rap version of Winnie the Pooh. Uh, watch for that. It's called Tigga Please. Uh, and uh, finally, my first self help book is coming out uh, this winter. Uh, it's a self help book uh, for black folks about Rush Limbaugh. It's called, He's Just Not That Into You People. <laughs> I'm John Fiegel saying thanks for coming. <laughs> That's the top story already! <laughs>